Welcome. I'm glad you're worshiping today. Um, if you're new to worshiping with us, please text the word welcome to 740-513-3929. Um, if you want to share a prayer concern or you want to uh, give an offering without touching anything, uh, check out our website, which is somersetumc.org. Let's stand for the call to worship. Come, place your trust in the Lord. Jesus will not let you down. Come, this is the time and the place to take the step of faith. We're going to talk about giving up um, our fear. So let's sing, Give to the Wind Thy Fears. It's on page 129 or on the screen. Let's sing together. Um, opening prayer God of mysterious ways you take our fears and turn them into triumphs you remind us you are always with us and we do not need to fear the wind and waves of life encourage us to step out of the boat to come across these difficulties to your redeeming and transforming love Give us courage and strength, joy and peace for all the times ahead. Amen. You may be seated. You might have been able to figure out um, from what we've said so far and the, the liturgy so far, but um, the scripture for today is Jesus walking on the water, and it comes from Matthew 14. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came to toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? 
When they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. In the story of creation, we find in the book of Genesis, we read where Adam and Eve, of course, partook of the forbidden fruit, something specifically denied to them. In fact, the only thing that was denied to them. Knowing God is searching for them, they hide. Now, it's a scene that could be reminiscent of some of our childhoods. We do something wrong, we realize we've done something wrong, and so we hide from our parents, or maybe not we hide, but we try to hide the evidence of what we did wrong. Of course, God finds them. He inevitably always will. And God asks them why they are hiding. Do you remember the response Adam gave? Because I was afraid. I think this story reminds us that fear goes all the way back to the very beginning of time. There seems to be no limit to our fears. In the Peanuts Christmas film, Charlie Brown goes to Lucy for a nickel's worth of psychiatric help. All right now, what seems to be your trouble? I feel depressed. I know I should be happy, but I'm not. Well, as they say on TV, the mere fact that you realize you need help indicates that you are not too far gone. I think we better pinpoint your fears. If we can find out what you're afraid of, we can label it. Are you afraid of responsibility? If you are, then you have hypengeophobia. I don't think that's quite it. How about cats? If you're afraid of cats, you have aleurophasia. Well, sort of, but I'm not sure. Are you afraid of staircases? If you are, then you have climacophobia. Maybe you have thalassophobia. This is fear of the ocean. Or jephorobia, which is the fear of crossing bridges. Or maybe you have pantophobia. Do you think you have pantophobia? What's pantophobia? The fear of everything. That's it! Sometimes we do feel like we're afraid of everything. Sometimes the truth is our fears get the best of us. It happened to the disciples. They're sailing across the lake, and this terrible, horrible storm arises. Now, they're fishermen by trade. This is not the first storm these guys have ever been in. They're big, strong, you know, guys. Um, But the storm doesn't show any sign of letting up, and so it gets the better of them. And they're starting to fear for their very lives. And then across the water they see Jesus. Now, in times of panic, sometimes, you know, our imaginations run a little bit wild. So the disciples, when they look across the water, they fail to recognize that it's actually Jesus they're looking at. And so one of them cries out, it's a ghost. Every person must fight their fears. Even Paul, the very sturdy Christian warrior, had to do that. Paul fell flat on his face in Athens. He did, according to what he says, you know, what he's written, he says he did exactly what he intended not to do. And, of course, then, in his own eyes, he'd failed. He wrote of his arrival in Corinth, saying, When we came into Macedonia, we had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings. Within were fears. Peter had fear, just like the rest of us, the fear of inadequacy and the fear of failing. But perhaps the most surprising fear of many people, and one, frankly, we don't really like to address, even admit to, is a fear of God. It's the fear that, you know, God isn't really completely on our side. It's the fear that God's going to put us out on a limb, and then he's going to leave us there. It's the fear that in the midst of the storm, we will be overcome. Over and over and over again, the message of the Bible is, Fear not. When Abram took his family to the promised land, he feared because he was turning his back on every single thing he knew. He was losing all of his security for the unknown. And God spoke to him and said, Fear not, Abram. I am your shield, and your reward will be great. When the Jews stood at the Red Sea and they could see Pharaoh's chariots coming on the horizon, They cried out. They're afraid that they're going to be slaughtered right there on the banks of the Red Sea. 
Moses says to them, stand still, fear not, see the salvation of the Lord. When the angel of the Lord comes to Mary and says that she's going to bear a child, it says she trembles with fear. What would become of her? Said the angel, fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Over and over and over again, the message of the Bible is clear. Fear not. Fear not. Over 70 times this is mentioned in the scriptures. More than any other human emotion is fear mentioned. Did you realize that? So if you have any fears, you are not alone. Paul writing to the young disciple Timothy said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. It's one of my favorite scriptures. One thing I would say to you is we need to confront our fears. We pay a price when we don't deal with the fears that we have. What's the risk if we don't deal with them? Well, all too often what happens is we become cynical. And when we become cynical, then we decide, well, we're just going to die anyway. And then the next thought is, well, we might as well just have as much fun as we possibly can before we go. And all of the morals get thrown out the window, and we become very fatalistic people. Once we grasp we need to deal with our fears rather than simply avoid or ignore them, we at least are on the right track. So first, we have to confront our fears. Seeing they're there and putting, them in their pl putting in their place the Spirit of God will replace them with that sound mind of love and power Paul talked, upon, talked about. We are not powerless in the midst of the storm. It's because we have the Spirit in us and on our side. Simon Peter is out in the boat crossing the Lake of Galilee after a long day with a, a huge crowd of people. Earlier that day, he had seen Jesus take bread and fish and feed at least 10,000 people. Tempestuous Peter is now tempting a storm. He's successful for a moment uh, when he decides he wants to imitate the master and step out of the boat, but the situation gets the very best of him, and fear rises in him, and when that happens, his body sinks. You know, I can just almost hear God whispering in Peter's ear, Quit letting your imagination magnify your fears. The storm's furious, but I'm bigger, I'm greater than any storm. Harness your imagination. Don't let it harness you. So the first thing we need to do is confront our fears. We have to step out of the boat to Jesus. Second, we need to understand that too much doubt can sink us. Charles Kettering was a one-time research head of General Motors, and he said if he would um, come across a problem that needed to be solved in the you know, manufacturing there at uh, General Motors, he would place a table outside of the um, meeting room, and on the table he would place a sign, leave your slide rules here. He said if I didn't do that, I would, you know, once the meeting started and we were trying to figure out how to you know, brainstorm to um, you know, fix this problem, he said, I'd find someone reaching for his slide rule. And then immediately the guy would be on his feet saying, boss, you just can't do that. I can see the other disciples in fear of the storm that's torturing the boat, in fear of the ghost that they see walking across the water, exhausted from a long day of, of you know, working with the masses, saying, Peter, you can't do that. We don't know who that is out on the water. It's a hallucination. I mean, God knows what it is, but Peter, you can't do that. But Peter does. I don't know for how long, but Peter walks on the water toward Jesus. Peter said, Lord, if it is you, you can make me walk on the water with you. Do you see that? Peter's walk on the lake isn't really the point. The point is, he wants to confirm that this ghost on the water isn't a ghost at all. It's Jesus. Jesus can make him walk on water. A ghost is only going to make him wet. Peter knows that the Lord can sustain us, even in the midst of the most horrible storm, when there is nothing but uncertainty around us. He will take care of you. 
But I want you to know faith is often, well, probably always, a risk-taking enterprise. It doesn't come in some perfect package. We can find ourselves caught midway between faith and doubt. Peter gets caught midway between Jesus and the crests of the really high waves going on. He doubts his walk. He begins to fear the storm. And what happens is he falls beneath the waves. This is a great story of all the things the church can accomplish. That's how I've often heard it preached, that, you know, Peter walking on the water with Jesus shows all the things that the church can accomplish. And that's all there. Um, If we put our faith in Jesus, there's nothing we can't accomplish. But it's also a story about our weaknesses. Here's the good news. If we sink, and of course, you've also heard sermons that talk about how, you know, you sink when you take your gaze off of Jesus. If it seems that the waves are destined to engulf us, we can call on our Savior. And every single time, his grace will pull us through. Alexander Solzhenitsyn was the very first person um, to alert the West about the horrible realities that he experienced in uh, Russia's labor camps. Solzhenitsyn said that there was only one time, he was in prison, in the prison camp for, for many, many years. I didn't look up how long, but it was a really long time. He said there was only one time that he found himself really getting discouraged. In fact, he was so discouraged that he seriously considered suicide. It was like, let's just end all of this right now. He was out de- outdoors, you know, they worked in these, in these uh, prison camps, um, but they had, they had gotten a couple of minutes uh, rest on this work detail. And so he'd sat down and as he was sitting there, you know, he was mulling all of this over in his mind. And he thought, you know, I just really don't care if I live or die anymore. Well, Someone he had never seen before in the prison camp and he never saw again, for no apparent reason, came and sat down beside him. The stranger took a stick and made a cross in the dirt on the ground. Solzhenitsyn sat and he stared at that cross for as long as his work break uh, lasted. He later wrote, once he was out, he wrote some books. He later wrote, staring at that cross, I realized therein lies freedom. At that point, in the midst of the storm, he received new courage, and he received the will to live. The storm didn't end that day. It wasn't like everything was roses in a prison camp. The storm still went on, but through Jesus, Solzhenitsyn found the strength to ride out that storm. I have no idea what storm of life is coming your way or what storm you might be enduring this very minute. But I know this, even as the storm is raging all around you, if you will listen very carefully with your heart, you're going to hear a gentle voice calling to you, saying, take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. And in time, the storm will pass. And Jesus is still going to be there, even after the storm is gone. Faith is not simply a passive Trusting God will come to us when we're all down and out. Faith is an active process. Faith is living a vital, full life, going places we would never go, loving people that we would never be able to love on our own, lifting, living life to the very fullest because we have met the master. It's stepping out of the safety of the boat. We must remember, regardless of what happens, God will be with us. The psalmist wrote, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Well, let me ask you, where else are we going to go? If the economy collapses, God is still going to be the same. God is the same yesterday and today and tomorrow. If we go to war with China tomorrow, God is still the same. God does not change. If you get a bad medical report, where are you going to go? God is still the same. Nothing has changed. In his Pulitzer Prize winning book, The Denial of Death, Ernest Becker says that um, a lot of the fears that we find ourselves grappling with, the, the fear of rejection, the fear of abandonment, the fear of failure, of separation, of loss, 
They're all manifestations of our one ultimate fear, and that's the fear of death. He might be right. How do we overcome that ultimate fear? It's faith. Faith is the only anecdote that will exercise all of the demons of fear that haunt us. I think it's telling that when Peter steps out onto the lake, he walks on the water, then he becomes terrified and he starts to sink. Jesus asked him why he doubted. Why didn't his faith carry him across the water to Jesus' side? And the answer is it was fear. Fear crept in and began to rise. And when the fear rises, Peter sinks. It's kind of the story of our life, isn't it? In the boat, we feel safe. But we, on occasion, are willing to brave the storm and go out on the water and do the impossible because of our faith. It's then that we suddenly realize that there's all kinds of, of wind and storms all around us raging, and it causes us fear. And then all those doubts start to creep in. It shows us that sometimes our faith can be a little fragile. Peter steps out in faith. There will be times when you are called to step out in faith as well. It might be to teach a Sunday school class. It might be to welcome a new family to our community. It might be to take a stand on a controversial issue for Jesus. There are a multitude of steps that God could call upon you to make. The main thing, of course, is to always keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. You remember how the story ends. Peter steps out on the water, he begins his walk, and just then the wind kicks up and Peter takes his eyes off of Jesus. And as soon as he does that, he begins to sink. And truly frightened, he cries out, Lord, save me. The story is told of old Bishop Warren Candler, um, the um, School of Theology, Theology at Emory University is named after Bishop Candler. And he was on his deathbed. And one of his friends came to, to visit him before he died. And he says, you know, tell me the truth. Are you scared about crossing this river of death? I mean, the, the man was literally dying right then. And Candler looked at him and he said, why? I belong to the father who owns the land on both sides of the river. In life, we have storms, but God is with us. That is our great salvation. That is our hope. I want you to know that God cares if you are immobilized by some fear in your life. But there comes a time when, like everything else, you have to put your fear at the foot of the cross and then lean back into the arms of an ever-loving and ever-gracious God. Then we too can echo the words of the old hymn, God will take care of you. He will take care of you. Let's pray. Lord, forgive our weakness and our lack of trust in you. We are like the disciples who in the midst of fears and storms, could only tremble and wonder about the threatening events. Even when Jesus called to the disciples, they shook with fear. But Jesus offered words of encouragement. Impulsive Peter asked Jesus to call to him and bid him come out of the boat. Jesus complied, and Peter stepped over the edge onto the waves. But fear claimed him again, and he began to sink. Many of us can identify with that moment when we let go of our faith and clutch onto our fears. Help us to place our trust totally in you and your call to us. You will guide and lift us to safety. That is the promise you have given to us, and we believe it. When our faith slips, scoop us up and bring us peace. Be patient with us, for we are flawed and yet loved by you. Give us strong hearts and willing spirits to be your disciples. Amen. Keep your focus on Jesus. He is your Savior and your guide.
He will never fail you. Rejoice, dear friends. You are called precious by our Lord. Sing our closing hymn. Let's uh, take its promises with us um, as we go. So let's stand and sing, God will take care of you. have been embraced by the love of God, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and blessed by Jesus to go into this world to offer healing and hope. Amen.